Hello everyone and welcome back to Clan Avac. Of course we're playing Clan Folk today. Now it has been a while since we last played and since then there have been two fairly important updates. Now we will get to what those updates are, have changed. Though in some cases it's more stuff that we will see coming into the game at some later stage. Perhaps uh, depending on the, the way the story system works. And the other is more, mm, well, it would have infected the, or rather affected, not infected, affected the game more at uh, game creation in that uh, it changes the way that the terrain is adjusted, but there are beavers in the game as well. Now, what are we going to be doing right now? Well, first and foremost, we're going to be allowing the clan to finish their work on the chicken coop. That's going to be a huge thing for us. We're also going to have to get uh, some of our breeding uh, chickens over into this coop in particular though on that note I do notice that there is something that we haven't added in here and we should absolutely do that right away and that is we need some vents let's go ahead pop in a vent there and a vent here as well so that uh, we can actually get some of the heat that we're going to be building up over here with these two brick ovens uh, sorry tiled pizzas into the actual chicken coops proper Right, okay, so that's uh, one part done. Now, the next part on our list of things to do, well, obviously, one big job is the planting. It is springtime as uh, as it goes, and we need to make sure that we're getting all of the things planted that we need planted. So let me just pause it there and make sure that we get all the crops down as quickly as we are able to. So we are going to need a good amount of oats. Well, we're honestly going to need everything. So neeps can go down here. We will get some onions down here. We'll have the food on this side. Some kale over there. We will have some beans down here. There we go. Then we're going to need oats. But before we pop that down, I'm going to plant some flax over on this side. Do we want heather and... Do we want just two uh, areas of oats, perhaps? Because flax and heather, that should be all we really need here. Sure, then we'll have two two areas of oats, because we've got the uh, onions, the neeps, the kale, uh, and beans over on there. So yeah, we can have two sets of oats there, so we have plenty of oats for bread and porridge and so on and so forth. We're also going to want to get down a bunch of uh, saplings, but we're going to need all of this work to be done first. So I'm actually going to select that and bump that priority up so that I can get the planting on the way nice and early. Now, is this spring going to be the spring where we get the farm shed built? Well, there's a good chance that it won't be, simply because so much work is going to have to be dedicated to the planting. The summer might be a better time for us to do that, if I'm honest. Uh, winter would have been the best possible time, but we had other things on our mind around then. Right, now then, let's have a quick look at the clan. It has been quite some time. Now, Bentham has actually become a senior. Uh, Kyra, I believe, is currently pregnant. So uh, you're going to have one more child, and then you'll more or less promptly become a senior straight after that. Uh, we have got traders who have arrived. We'll get to them in just a moment. We apparently need a little bit of straw, which it's going to be a constant need, that one. Also, another thing that would be nice to do is plant down some weeds so that we can actually get some of that straw. So let's uh, actually go ahead and do that, shall we? Uh, you may notice things look a little bit different. If you did, well done you. You are very observant. Uh, there are a few differences that have crept in. Uh, let's try and grab over there. Can we... Oh, these patches have uh, stuff growing. But you can sort of see through the water a little bit. And there's a bit, very big reason for that. Again, I mentioned there are now beavers in the game. And beavers, well, as one would imagine, they involve water. and But not just any old water. They involve rivers. And rivers pose a very peculiar problem for our peeps in that uh, they might want to do be on the other side of the river. And how does one do that? Well, they do that by building bridges. So yes, we've got uh, the consequence of adding beavers was to also add the ability for beavers to swim, which also meant adding all other animals and indeed people the ability to swim. 
also building uh, beaver uh, lodges, I think they're called lodges, the, the sort of dams, well, the, the dams that beavers build are, are just dams that's in order to flood a region so they can build their home in the middle of it uh, so that they can access it underwater and keep predators out, uh, if I understand correctly. Uh, but I, I think their homes are called beaver lodges, which I think is particularly wonderful. But yes, the consequence of adding beavers is a whole lot of other things got added as well, including the ability to build bridges, which means that we can now build on water not just build on water but we can build uh, structures on well, well walls at the very least and roofs as well as the actual flooring so that's going to open up a lot of things for us new baby chicken ah interesting good timing actually right we should probably check in on the traders see if they've got anything that we would like to take there is some leather and I, I might not be uh, against taking some of that but uh, not right now we definitely don't need another Mail check. We've got one rooster and one uh, one pullet there. That's everything that we need. Have we got some butter that I could possibly sell? I don't intend to sell any of our clothing for right now. So I'm going to say thank you very much. You can head off. Uh, who's up next? Now, you've got some clean wool that I wouldn't mind taking off your hands. And you've also got some wool hanks I wouldn't mind taking off your hands as well. You've also got some peat dry brick, which I wouldn't mind taking. Now, at this point, all of the clans, we're pretty much in great standing with all of the clans. We don't actually need any more clan standing. So, at this stage, we're selling things... Uh, mostly just out, out of a desire to, to be good neighbours, really. Uh, or rather, buying things. At least things that we don't strictly need. Though I will take that to make a little bit more iron. There we go. Right, you can head on out. But uh, yes, we, we very much don't need to be building up any more standing with anyone at this stage. And that's actually going to come into some more of the things that I'm going to be changing in the uh, near future. Is there anything else we want to do here? We've got so much hay. I could sell some hay, I suppose. I could also sell some bark. We're going to have a lot of that very soon, actually. Uh, but for now, I think that's okay. We can definitely afford to sell some stone blocks. These are going to be a bit of a cash crop for us, I've mentioned before. But uh, I don't see a reason not to be uh, not to be selling these on. Uh, do we want even more? Sure. You know what? Let's go all in. Let's get back up to over a thousand. That will do very, very nicely indeed. Right, and you can be on your way. Thank you ever so much. Hopefully we can get all of that sorted out shortly. Now then, as far as the tasks go, we're doing a good job of fertilizing these fields. Well done. The only problem is they have to carry the fertilizer up from over here, which is one of the big reasons why we want to build a proper, like, sort of farm, large farm workshop up here, so that I can store the bags of fertilizer once they're made. You know, once someone has time enough to go up there and do it, then they can, they can carry that over. But now they've actually uh, finished this little area here, let's go ahead and plant some trees across these stumps like so as soon as this one's done I'm not gonna do it until they've got an entire row because I want them to all grow at the same time <laughs> that's just just uh, just what it is I, I I know I could get more efficiency out of it if I would just give in and do it now but it would irritate me way way too much now we do need straw do we have enough items to get the straw I think we can thresh can we get straw out of hay yeah we can thresh the hay so that shouldn't be too terribly bad but we do have quite a lot of straw needed for the those straw rugs and so on and so forth the various torches need some more straw so that's a, a kind of an always job but soon we will have plenty of straw coming in I'm thinking we're probably going to want to start trying to uh, actually stockpile much, much more straw uh, over the years so that we, we're not uh, not struggling with it quite as much as I am right now. We're also using a fantastic amount of straw at the moment in setting up all of the beds in here. We have put some greens in here and I think these are going to be just green troughs in the chicken coop and I think that, that should be fine. Now, we have a couple of new things that have been added. As always, there there seems to be whenever we record another episode of these. But these are now the bridges that I mentioned. So there is a bridge of every single type. And I see no reason not to just go ahead and unlock all of them. We've been slowly making our way down all of this. Yes, there are functional things that I could be unlocking right now. But instead, I choose to invest in this. But the one th functional thing that I will also invest our points in is the meat smoker. I know I said I was going to go for leather. I know I said I was going to go for cheese press, but uh, I want the bridges 
for reasons that we're going to get to fairly soon. And also the meat smoker, because I've been really thinking about the food situation that we've got. We are gathering eel. We are not currently gathering fish, but uh, we are gathering eel. Is there any reason for that? Honestly. Um, I mean, I could, I suppose, feed the eel to my uh, guests. They don't really care too much about the meals. One meal is as good as the next. Eels can go into the cook pot. Now, the cook pot's an interesting one, because right now I've got... Uh, I allow my clan and my workers to use the cook pot. But realistically, I probably would be better off intentionally making them food, which gives them some sort of effect, such as the work bonus, the warmth bonus from a hearty stew. I mean, everyone wants haggis and leaps. I mean, that's just going to be a thing. Um, or, for example, the fish stew for our for our colonists, for our clan, so that they can uh, improve their skills a lot faster. But when it comes to things like eels and cooked fish, they're just food. They are purely nutrition. Haggis is a bit of a different one, but um, a lot of the food, uh, in just, just a single ingredient food, is just nutrition. And for a guest, giving them a little bit of satisfaction from having a full belly, that will increase the amount of money they'll give us uh, for staying here. And they could just as easily get that from a cook pot. Uh, so maybe getting the, the eel, but honestly, we've got so much meat. So much meat, so many berries, so many mushrooms that we could put into this. I wouldn't want to put in broad beans, pluck, which is uh, organs from large game, uh, kale, onions, or neeps, because those we get far less frequently, and they are more important for our colonists. But uh, regardless, raw eels is what's put in here, not cooked eels. So from this point forward, I'm going to turn off cooking eels. Let's not do that. Likewise, I don't think there's any particular reason to cook fish. And the reason for this is, again, it's just calories, and, and uh, we're going to have other things that I would prefer our kitchens to focus on for our, for our peeps, and likewise cooked meat, so on and so forth. And the, one of the reasons that I've come to this decision is I was looking through what we can sell other clans. Things like cheese, butter, we can definitely sell. Smoked fish, smoked meat. These are things, uh, also bread, um, these are things that traders will buy, and using this to make money, especially to pay the wages of our workers, that makes a lot of sense, but things like uh, just cooked eel, or just cooked fish, rather than smoked fish, that doesn't help us in any way. Uh, I don't think uh, they will even buy eggs, I'm fairly certain they won't. They'll buy, uh, you know, various clans, depending on where they come from, will buy uh, the, uh, the the young animals and such, but uh, yeah, I think that's where we're going to go. And because of that, I'm getting rid of this eel trap. We don't need it anymore. We have we have gone to the point that the clan no longer needs to be catching eels. I don't think so. We're going to get rid of these. We'll allow the uh, the fish to do their thing. We will set up fishing. At some point, obviously, we've got to unlock fishing first to make that happen. But uh, we don't need this. We don't need the fish. I'm going to allow them to cook the eggs because that's just a byproduct of having having hens, frankly. Now, cooked meat and uh, pluck on a stick. I'm going to say no to pluck on a stick. Don't use the pluck for that. The pluck should be used in other ways. Likewise with roast onions. We have enough food. We, we should always have enough food to, at the very least, make bread. Uh, so our bread oven should more or less constantly be on the go. Uh, that should never be a, a problem for us. So uh, and likewise, but uh, eventually, once we get the cheese press up and running, we'll also have that. But right now, I don't think there's any reason for us to use our rather limited supply of other foods. Now, one thing that I had been doing up to now is keeping a certain stock of some foods. Like I'm willing to let them cook the, the just the the raw meat because we've got an enormous supply of that, and that's a byproduct more than anything else of other things that we do. We just get meat just from predators wanting to go for our animals and being taken out by our wolfhounds. Uh, but uh, keeping a little stock of, of food just in case we run out of the major meals, that seems to make sense for me. Uh, likewise, though, we've got bros for that as well, which is oat grain. We really do get by on, on uh, a diet of uh, oat really at this point and there's there's nothing more more filling than a hearty scottish porridge i must confess now the cooking pot over here there is one exception to any food will do for 
uh, guess, and that is if we have a look in here, there are a few that give satisfaction specifically. And that is Haggis, and of course, Haggis and Neeps. Satisfaction of two a second. It, but we've got such a good in already that I don't think we need to be giving them haggis and neeps. I mean, at that point, that's just a flex. That guests here eat better than some clans do in their own hearths uh, and homesteads. Um, that, that, that is definitely a flex. Uh, the, just giving them just haggis by itself, also a flex. But, you know, the one satisfaction a second, you know, that might take someone from almost perfect to perfect. So that's a possibility. But ultimately, I'm thinking of just moving things around in here and having the cook... Uh, pot in here and then people can just eat from there. We don't have any instruments on this right now So I'm kind of tempted to just move this. I could either move it up uh, You know, I'll just take it out of here in its entirety. That is absolutely also a an option since we don't have any uh, Items in here for, for people to use for entertainment. I don't think that's gonna be an issue uh, We're also gonna take down the serving table here as well because we are going to move this now This is just a two by two structure uh, but you just designate what they're allowed to use and since we are almost certainly going to be fishing as well as having raw meat That should cover all of this for us and what you need is you need I believe a Certain amount of raw meat in there and also basic foods so or vegetables and then you've got pottage and That's going to be the guest food from for now on I think um, the problem is here is that this is already set up We're gonna lose six uses of something. Ah, uh, it sucks but it's what it is. Uh, we're just going to move that all the way down there, and then that should be grand. In fact, thinking about it, I guess we could keep the uh, the uh, item for sorry the uh, instrument rack in here if we really wanted to. I'm not going to worry about it too much right now. I think we just need to get uh, get all of this sorted out, and we should be good, and we can make some decisions after that. Okay, you've started this up. We don't want you making bros in here. I mean, funny. But don't. Uh, also, I want this turned off so that you don't start uh, loading this with heal because we haven't even gotten all of this ready yet, so there's no reason for it. Okay, we've been passing time relatively slowly whilst I've been getting all of that sorted. Uh, we need to get the rest of these trees done, and I don't need to do anything with these because these bushes are already there. They will uh, just mature now because they have all been fertilized. And uh, we should have everything set up there relatively soon. Now, as for everything over here, hopefully we can get all of these done. Uh, have we got the crops? Auto replant is now a priority eight job, which is uh, important. Let me go ahead and say that all of these crops are a priority eight just to get them going. There we go. I want these done as a massive priority because spring is the is the time for getting planting going. And then I'm just going to leave it on a priority 8 after that. Priority 8 being pretty much the highest normal priority I will give something. We reserve uh, priority 9 for like super important jobs that I kind of want done immediately. And then there's, uh, there's a kind of... Uh a literal emergency priority that we can activate that is me saying hey I don't care whether you need to go to the toilet whether you were uh, just trying to sleep whether the baby is crying whatever I've just said needs to be done is so important that if you don't do it it could actually cause uh, cause some dire consequences for the clan down the road so you need to get up stop doing whatever you're doing and go to it. And maybe maybe stop for the baby if, if it looks like an emergency but understand that uh, not doing this might cause the baby to cry worse in the future. So, you know, your own, uh, use your own judgment on that one. Uh, right, let's find out. And you might think that that's a bit exaggerated in a game that doesn't have fighting. Well, that's one of the other changes. So uh, we will cover that in a little bit because that's a big change. But one thing I would like to do here is I would like to create a little bit of a pier out here. There we go. Yes, we can build piers now. That is something I am super, super happy about. So, log bridge. In fact, I could take the, the log bridge all the way down if I really want to. And uh, maybe I do, as it happened, want to. Uh, can we do it all the way down there? I, I'm i probably going to have to wait for that part to be done. So, we'll cancel these floors right there. Uh, we'll also bring the log bridge out to here. There we go. That has now made the connection. Perfect. So, this is going to create a nice little uh, point coming all the way out. In fact, let's cancel these parts. And instead, I would like to move this down here, the flax retting. 
so that we can create a little bit of a, a, of a covered area, maybe. Something along those lines. Let me go back and grab more log bridge components. Are those going to be in the water? Yes, that part would be. So we'll do something like this, just to create a, a bit of, uh, of, a, of a cover. In fact, if we cancel this part out as well, we may even be able to build a wall and then have a bridge going over this little part. I think that would be lovely. We might even be able to bring the bridge all the way down so that while someone's out here dealing with the flax ratting, they're not getting rained on. I would very much be in favour of that. Uh, should we go for a big wall? I can't place anything there, I don't think. We well, might be able to. Can I place something there? No, I can't place something there. We'll see if maybe after I've placed down the bridge section, whether they're able to build on that. If not, that's fine. But we should be able to get a roof out across here. Possibly. It really does depend a little bit on uh, on how the physics work. I've not had an opportunity to check that out, so this is me learning the situation right now. But uh, this would be a nice little wooden log bridge down there. I think it would be very, very pretty. Uh, if we can build a, a roof over it, though, we are absolutely going to try and do something like that for our clay pit, because I'm, I'm definitely going to want uh, our workers at the clay pit to not have to get rained on the whole time. That seems to be a bit of a problem for them. Right then, we've got a bunch of jobs for people to do, especially a load of jobs in the farms. They're already starting to, to uh, put some extra fertilizer. Really, an extra fertilizer down there? Wasn't it already heavily fertilized? I mean, okay, you're, you're the farmers, not me, so I'm going to uh, defer to your judgment on that one. But we've got a bit of uh, work for them to do. It is currently, uh, well, judging by the look of the shadows, we're coming into the evening on the first day of spring. I will bring you back when there is more to report. And welcome back. It is morning on the 2nd of spring and our guests are all leaving. One of the nice things that I noticed in the uh, in the night was we managed to get our cooking pot all filled up. It requires 12 raw meat and then 24 basic food, which I imagine could just be more meat. I, well, I certainly hope so. Uh, there are exactly six servings in this and we have six places for guests. So that kind of works out really, really well in my opinion. Furthermore... It is time to introduce you to the very latest member of the clan. Everyone say hello to Tubman, Bentham and Kyra's new baby. They have already uh, gotten, I believe they've gotten the clan tartan. Have they been given the clan tartan? Let's have a quick look. No, not yet. Hopefully that will be very, very soon. It doesn't doesn't uh, do for a member of the clan not to be in the clan colours. No, no. Uh, hopefully we can make some clan tartan for them then if we don't already have some available. But it uh, looks like we have a messenger on the way. Interesting. Very interesting. In fact, we've got a couple of traders as well. This place really could do with a little bit of a clean, doesn't it? But let's have a look at the the messenger. Right, uh, Hugh from Clan Macintosh is accusing Janet of running away with his baby. He's demanding that they come back with him. Janet does not want to leave and is afraid. Well, I mean, it's rather simple uh, choice here, but this is now a continuation of the story element in the game that uh, I did mention could turn into fisticuffs. But uh, for now, of course, we're going to keep Janet and Florence. They sought refuge here, and refuge they shall have. Uh, but there may well be more repercussions for that choice going further down the road. Now, before anyone who has been excited about this game, basically RimWorld without violence, gets worried about the, the mention of combat, this will be a completely optional element in that you can simply disable the potential for violent conflict to arise. Um, you, I'm not sure how that will affect the story elements. Maybe the story elements will change a little bit or, 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 or what will uh, happen there. Perhaps they will only have two outcomes. You, you either acquiesce or you succeed in uh, standing your ground. Uh, I believe that there, there are basically failure states for, for the the uh, negotiation, which will possibly come next. But we'll talk more about that should it happen in this episode. But we've got a couple of traders, so let's go and have a quick look-see. We have got some more chicks that I am absolutely okay with saying goodbye to. So you can head off as well, get a little bit of cash for that. We've got plenty of clothes. We do not need 23 wool shirts. 
Okay, I'm going to I'm going to get rid of some of those. We need the cash, okay? Uh, there we are. I could also sell an axe, frankly. Do we have much? Uh, we've only got three ingots, so I'm going to say no to that one. Uh, we could sell the butter, though. We don't technically need the butter for any of the meals that I make. At least I don't believe so. Let me have a quick look. Do we actually use butter in any of these? I don't think so. I think butter is just basically a luxury food that we make. Uh, let me just have a double check. Oh, no, we do. We need butter for haggis and leaps. Well, in that case, you can't have it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was willing to part with our butter, but now I know what we need it for. I'm reserving that for the clam. Uh, as for you, again, someone who wants more... more uh, uh, chicken. Uh, I mean, uh, okay, uh, but not right now. Uh, right, there we go. That's all well and good. We've got, oh, look at that. Bluebells. Beautiful. I'm going to buy those bluebells. We are going to decorate with them. There we are. Hopefully we can get this place cleaned up, though, because that's frankly just a, a mess. Really? We thank you for the gift. I'm sure Bentham and Cairo will be extremely happy with that. Uh, oh, well. Uh, I, I mean, to be fair, it's not a mouse. If Tilly went out and brought me back a hare, I'd actually praise Tilly. Well done, Tilly. You are you are paying your rent. Good girl. Uh, bringing us back mice, mm, less, less rent. And, and it's more of, a, more of a gesture, really. A gesture I appreciate, but then less so when I have to clean it up. But uh, unless this is the apocalypse, rats don't count as rent. Rabbits, yes, but please don't hunt the rabbits outside, Tilly. I, I get great amounts of joy for watching them frolicking outside my window, as it happens. Uh, there has been a lot less of that since the construction work has started. I have checked. The warrens are still there, and there is still plenty of sign of them being lived in warrens. Fresh droppings and such, so the rabbits are fine, which is good, because there's been enormous amounts of uh, work. They've been demolishing some uh, uh, council offices nearby, and uh, I was quite concerned that it might have caused the warrens to become unsafe, or just simply the rabbits to have left as a consequence of it, but uh, no, they're still there. They're just keeping their heads down, which is pretty wise, honestly. Right, uh, as for the work going on, we've actually got a couple more idea points. Well done. Uh, I could go for the ironclad door. I mean, that would be something, but I don't think we will. I think we're going to go for the fishing spot next, uh, simply because it is it is high time for getting fishing, but look at the wooden, uh, wooden bridge sections already going in extremely pleased with this very much looking forward to what this is going to look like once this is built out we actually have uh flooring there i'm really hopeful that we can build a proper little bridge and maybe we could even have uh the fishing spot off this pier we, you can now make lakeside houses for all intents and purposes. If you want a room with a view, you can totally do that and have a little uh, little balcony or, or, I guess, well, a pier sounds a little bit grandiose for what is effectively a balcony, but effectively a little little platform to just step outside uh, outside your room. Out, well, I mean, okay, we, we haven't got, like, massive glass doors here, but you know what I mean. Just step out, get a, get a beautiful view in the morning, and then uh, pop back in. Maybe have a chair out there or something. So Still waiting on these being made. I'm actually going to bump their priority back up to eight because we have got a lot of places which, with straws being used, and this is literally the last place I need it used before I can get the uh, the chickens moved over. So let's try and make that a priority. And then we can move on to other things. But while all that's going on, we've got plenty of things to uh, to be done. We, we are doing an amazing job with the planting. I am super, super happy with uh, how quick our farmers are getting these fields planted. I was quite concerned that that was going to take a little bit longer. But uh, we're only on the second day. And we've almost got four of the fields fully done, which is absolutely wonderful. Kyra is now going to have to get rid of the stubble in this field to prepare it. But uh, the rains have also helped in that they have hydrated the fields very very well oh thank you so much oak that is wonderful there we are getting that uh, final field ready so some of the uh, the more difficult to grow vegetables are already planted so they're going to have the the best chance now of having all that and oh look beavers fantastic actually sounds like beavers too not some sort of weird made up sound okay i uh, I, I give great props great props to the dev this is this is marvelous i hugely approve uh, right, okay, well, uh, we've still got loads of work to do, but uh, I've already given them a lot of work, so they've got currently 415 jobs. 
of which only 161 are hauling. I would have liked to have seen like 300 being hauling. Well, I wouldn't have liked to have seen it, but it would have made me feel better to know that there, there was that many jobs uh, that were just hauling. But this is how uh, going across the water works. Uh, they are, are actually now properly, you know, wading through the water. You can't can't see all of it, but uh, you can see them moving through. It's got good animations. Beavers are not slowed down by water, which is quite amusing. And uh, there was a little bit of an amusing uh, anecdote in the dev log about how initially, when when uh, people were were swimming. Uh, the part of the water translucency uh, affected their clothes and so they became naked which kind of makes sense and also doesn't for a lot of reasons but uh, yeah so uh, interesting but there we go we're going to pass a little bit more time get some more jobs done and uh, hopefully when you come back I'll have some big changes to report but the main thing to take away the family grows welcome Tubman I hope you have a wonderful child time as a child in this clan uh, perhaps we'll see you playing with Mini Murgle quite a lot. One can but hope. Look who I spy marching in with some friends, all of them with various battle scars. Okay, so now is the time for us to quickly go over some of the new additions to skills and why I haven't been in the skill tree just yet. Say hello to persuasion and to intimidation. Now, if you're wondering why everyone's got some degree of intimidation, uh, but uh, not as many people have any kind of uh, persuasion at all, it's because persuasion is a skill of talking, and there seems to be far less instances or opportunities for people to talk. Uh, it, it seems like that's something that we might want to use as an indicator, that I'm not giving them enough of a social area to just hang out and chit-chat. But intimidation, interestingly, is also a function of the sort of hard work that they're doing. So uh, manual labor trains intimidation. Uh, again, game logic, but uh, suffice it to say, this is gonna be an important one for what's about to go down for us. Uh, let's make sure that uh, people's skills are where they need to be. Uh, so in this case, uh, if intimidation is, uh, we're just going in, in like skill priority here, but I'm trying to give preference for uh, things that people actually enjoy as well uh so it does kind of mean that our youngest have some of the best intimidation skills really okay fair enough i'm not going to question it but uh yeah we're trying to keep persuasion for the family uh up nice and high and then as for intimidation it's just going to be um in wherever it kind of slides in there but this is definitely something that we're going to care about uh moving forward so uh ah, of course kid brain so oak is learning to intimidate very well from doing all of their chores well done oak now where this is in the priority queues matters uh in that we're probably going to want people to react quickly if I expect the, there to be trouble. So uh, for this, before we get into the actual uh, the actual uh, negotiation mini game, as it were, I'm gonna say workers, mm, do we want this really to, to be like a super high priority or not? Uh, I'm kind of feeling that maybe it should be. But at the same time, this is quite a fair way of doing it. It's, it's literally deciding who's gonna be stepping forward if there's a fight. And uh, right now, Oak, one of our children, is on paper one of the people who should be right up front as a bruiser. And I, I'm not sure that sits as well with me. Well, I'll just leave it be skill uh, order for now. But uh, we have got a messenger on the way who's going to want to have a little bit of a chit chat with us. Uh, okay, so are you? Oh, are you going for? You're going to deliver a message to Bentham? Hmm, okay. Are we going to entertain them in the uh, in the clan hall? This is probably the most well-appointed area. Bentham, come over here. Let's let's have a chit chat in the area where we do messages. Uh, is, are they all on their way? Yes. It looks like they have shown up to chat with Bentham. Okay. So Bentham is uh, designated clan leader. Outcast father returns. Hugh has returned with three guards and is demanding the return of Janet and Florence. 
Deny Hugh's request and explain that Janet and Florence will not be leaving with them. Pay Hugh 500 coins to leave permanent. Oh, so we can actually sort this out with cash or send Janet and Florence away. We, we really only have these. I would like to explore the negotiation, but like 500 coins, I mean, we have it. So that is an option. So let's go into the negotiation, uh, the negotiation mini game. So... Negotiation help. We can bring this up. Negotiations take place in real time and the possible outcomes change over time. Persuasive or intimidating conversation topics are picked in turn. Higher levels of persuasion or intimidation skills will move the bars more. Persuasion will change authority, whereas imitation, uh, sorry, imitation, uh, intimidation will change courage. If authority or courage bars hit the maximum, then the other side will give in. If either bar reaches the maximum, then your clan will give in. Uh, if the authority or courage bars hit the... Oh, sorry, minimum there. Minimum. So we need to pull these down. So this is... A heated argument erupts with Hugh. This is a dangerous situation. So these are Hugh's patience, authority, and courage. If I pull either of their bars down, authority or courage to the minimum, then he will give in. But if Hugh maxes either of those bars, then we will give in to their demands. Negotiation choices need to have the vertical bar in the highlighted area to allow selection. Uh, that part I'm not quite uh, certain of. Uh, the vertical bar, which would be something like this. Uh, need to have the vertical bar in the highlighted area to allow selection. Oh, I see. Convince you to leave Janet and Florence here. So, I would say the horizontal bar, but um, threaten Hugh and their guards, scaring them off. So I would need Hugh's courage to be all the way down there to choose this one and just say, leave now or don't leave. Uh, convince Hugh and Janet to leave, you know, it's like, they're better here. This, this, you don't want, want this to ruin the relationship between our clans. Uh, send Janet and Florence away to avoid the conflict or fight the guards, which will start a brawl. We no longer have the choice to pay up okay that's that's a shame because if i'd realized that i might have just paid up but uh, okay I, look i don't want to brawl brawls lead to injuries uh use the conversation topic slider to make persuasion or intimidation topics more likely negotiations need to uh, blah, blah, blah. beware moving the slider also lowers patience faster so right now he is going to lose 100 patience a second but if we try for persuasion, we've got level zero. Uh, we could possibly pull authority down by 100 a second. But uh, the pick chance would be 50%. If I moved over there, it would be 50% chance. Oh, actually, sorry. Right now, it's 50-50. We'll go in either way. We've got intimidation level two. So we can affect courage a lot faster. If patience runs out before a choice is picked, your clan will give in. Uh, we can start a fight at any time. I can also signal for backup. You can signal for backup when active clan folk will gather as a show of force. Clan folk use the priority of the intimidation skill to choose if they should continue to work or come glare at opponents. Clan folk provide back, uh, providing backup will intimidate the opponent. Note, sometimes intimidating the opponent will not lead to a desirable outcome. And it was actually uh, pointed out that there's a, there's a lot of interesting things to to understand in this for example having a show of force will make possibly affect someone's courage but might also um reduce their patience a lot faster and and likewise if like you go full intimidation down here Patience is going to run out a lot quicker, whereas if you go go all the way over here, the patience, likewise, if you just, like, they look, look, you know, because they're going to just be talking, and, and the example was someone is saying, oh, well, it's nice weather we've got here, and you, you have got full intimidation, so your character res responds with, yes, and your face looks very punchable, and then they're like, oh, okay, it's a weird thing to say, but, uh, so, uh, how's the, how's the, uh, the crops been this season? Your face still looks really punchable. Eventually, you're going to get really tired of that. That, that kind of interaction so that's why patience goes down a lot faster if you're really leaning into something over having a more natural kind of give and take showing that you're you're willing to hear them out that you're listening to their concerns but also trying to put your point across that's the most natural and this is going to have the least impact on on uh, patience which is uh, more of an interesting one having everyone show up and just glare 
it, it could just back someone into a corner. And they also said that having people in a, uh, an environment which shows a lot of your clan's prestige kind of has an effect on authority as well, which, which might just gradually drain it, which is why I wanted to have this in here. But okay, we've got this set up. Let's have a quick look at the uh, chat going on right now. So Bentham should be having a chit chat. Uh, you're being ignored. Patience is dropping very quickly. Uh, Bentham, do you want to actually talk with you? I would uh, imagine. Are you just straight up ignoring him? Right. You're trying to do this. Well, how about... Is there a way for me to tell you to, to chat with him? Um, is there not? Because you're trying to just move stuff. Will you please have a word? My goodness. Uh, I would have imagined that this would go a little bit bit better, but if we have a look in here, like uh, we can see the various interactions, free time, large room, etc., etc. Is there no way for me to tell Bentham to stop doing everything else and just focus on this? Maybe, ah, maybe I need to tell Bentham, since you've been elected as the uh, clan leader here, they're going to be full on. Let's try that. Let's just put Bentham's... Uh, jobs right up at the top. There we go. So please stop doing other things and have a chit chat. No, no, come back here. Come back here, Bentham. Bentham, behave, my dude. My lord. Let's see, are you going to interact? No, it, it, it looks like you're straight up just ignoring them. Um, this isn't going to go well, Bentham. They're trying to have a talk with you. <laughs> okay, so this, this whole thing... <laughs> might well be a little bit buggy. I was hoping it wasn't going to be quite this buggy, or perhaps I just don't understand the scenario, or, or how I'm meant to tell Bentham what he's meant to be doing. Uh, still, I would have assumed that this was the correct way of getting that to occur. Let me go ahead and bump everyone's persuasion and intimidation checks up. Okay, well, I've given everyone the option to do what they want, but uh, I've even told Bentham to just take the time off. But Bentham does not want to do anything in here. Uh, how about maybe I change this around a little bit? No, that is just causing this to get even worse. All right, well, I'm a little bit concerned that this is just going to go very sideways. Uh, you're being ignored. Your patience is dropping. Bentham is cheerful, good talk, apparently. Uh, I, I think that, that's a very one-sided assessment of the situation. Uh, all right, well, given this, I'm just going to say uh, when active clown folk will gather as a show of force, because we are about to enter a fight, I would say. Uh, will you please just have a chat with him? No, okay, pausing it there, because we are about to lose our opportunity to have Janet and Florence stay here. I consider a fight a straight-up lose. We have lost this if we're having to resort to fisticuffs. But it is what it is right now. I, I feel a little bit cheated because I tried to do the whole having a chit-chat in here. Is that a building that maybe I didn't place down? Let me have a quick, quick look, see if there is any kind of thing for that. No, there's a vacancy sign. Uh, are there any things that denote a, a zone? Is there a new zone, perhaps? New zone, workers, guests, no, nope, nothing there really standing out to me. Okay, well, it is what it is. We're just going to have to say, uh, 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 yeah, uh, two arms. A brawl has erupted. It's time for you and his guards to leave. Uh, I think uh, Bentham is probably going to suffer quite badly here. <laughs> Uh, Bentham's health's already going a bit shy. Everyone is short. Bentham, don't run away. Bentham, what are you doing? There is a fight, my dude. Stop ignoring the invaders. Gosh darn it. Ah, uh, my lord. Uh, all right. Well, it seems that uh, people don't really ag agree. Uh, I mean, that's certainly one way of dealing with the fight, just to ignore it. But I'm not sure that it's uh, necessarily the best way to deal with the fight. Ah, uh, the testing bar branch shenanigans, I'm afraid. Uh, okay, well, let's see how this goes. It, it looks like no one is actually getting involved in this. Is there any way... Oh, wait, wait. Sticks Genie has shown up for the fight. Oh, now now it's, they're throwing down properly. Okay, maybe what I needed to do is, is wait for people to actually 
gather together at the very beginning instead of just saying, hey, yeah, we'll, we'll acknowledge your, uh, your message right now. Uh, it looks like, I mean, our clan is huge and we've got a lot of workers here, so it doesn't surprise me at all that George has gone down. So uh, you were knocked out. And we've got Simone over here, injured. Mood is down, work is down, surrounded. They have me surrounded. Courage is going down very, very quickly. Also patience. Um, persuasion 4, intimidation. They came here far better equipped than we were, I'm not going to lie. Uh, brawling help. Negotiations have failed and triggered a brawl. Brawling may lead to permanent injuries and should be avoided when possible. I wish I could have. The goal of a brawl is to knock out or scare away the opposition. If a brawler's health gets low, they will be knocked out. If a brawler's courage gets low, they will run away. Only clan folk with the intimidation skill active will brawl. Aha, so that's how I turn that off for people. Good to know. The higher the intimidation skill, the more likely they will knock out an, uh, an opponent, that should be, I imagine. The final courage values from the negotiation are applied to each side at the start of the brawl. Clan folk will pick brawling opponents based on their distance and priority. Well, I'm going to say that we are handedly winning this fight, just sheer force of numbers alone. Um, yeah, I think, I think, fine, you win, keep them. They're not worth the trouble. I, what you, I, I think that was rather rude of you, frankly. That's right. Throw them away. That, that, that is, that, take them, escort them to the edge of the clan and uh, have them leave. Don't, uh, there are many ways you could, you could construe, uh, construe, throw them away. And I, I want the least murderous ones, please. Now, as for everything else going on, let's have a quick look through here and see how our clan is. Because that was just a complete mess. Is anyone wounded? Let's have a look. Uh, things seem to be okay. Yeah, you know, the babies, I'm fairly certain, don't ever fight. But uh, maybe the people carrying them sh also shouldn't have been fighting. Uh, listening, social, mood. Well, hopefully that's going to increase your your social skills. All right, so we we oh no, injured. Okay, work is down a little bit. This was Six Genie. You were the one that got into the fight proper. Um, you're tireless. You're healthy, and you're an optimist. You you were were uh, ground zero for the for the brawl. Really, well done. You defended the clan's honor. Uh, there they go, they're off the tail between their legs, the scoundrels. But, uh, yeah, we, I clearly don't understand how this works, or we had some shenanigans. Now, my guess would be that what I really needed to do is wait until Bentham was actively talking to them and uh, had finished his, his work, because it seems like everyone just did their own thing until the the job that they were currently doing was complete though the way the kind of bentham was stuttering around there seems like a bit of a weird one like sometimes he would consider himself not having a job then he would try and pick up a new job so on and so forth so uh definitely things that could be improved there but the takeaway is we won and uh janet and uh where is florence are staying with us for now. We've got a couple of travelers coming in for the night. Uh, they've heard of our uh, martial prowess and they would like to seek our, our protection uh, against uh, an angry mob from Clan Macintosh who seem to be loitering on the clan outskirts, giving them odd glares. Nevertheless, come on in, gra grab, a, uh, grab a hearty meal and a good bed for the night and uh, we will regale you with tales of how we, we rallied to protect the innocent. Well, actually, we don't know that they're innocent. Uh, maybe, maybe this is uh, maybe there's more to that story than than we know. But nevertheless, we decided on the side that we were going to be fighting for, and we won. And that is the important part. The winner gets to decide what the history was. That is a bit grim and perhaps a little bit too on the nose for real world times right now. But uh, nevertheless, so uh, go team Avac! Yay! Are we the baddies? I hope we're not the baddies. Quick, everyone, check your caps. Have you got skulls on them? Welcome back. It is uh, somewhere around midday going on towards the evening now on the fifth day of spring. Uh, we still haven't found any traders that will sell us grain, unfortunately. So uh, it might be a case that we're not going to be able to set uh, this farm up until we get our first harvest. But we have finished the bridge. Unfortunately, I can't build a roof over anywhere that doesn't have a floor when it comes to bridge building. So you definitely can't 
um, like build over a uh, watering hole or anything like that it seems if we have a look at the roof here can't build out there can't build over these but I have been able to build over the bridge that we've got here and set up a little fishing spot so what we're going to do is I'm going to set in a uh, fish uh, two fish uh, maybe even three fish actually and then wait until tomorrow and we're going to have that on repeat that should get us everything we need i'm not sure how well that will do with the fishing side of thing actually let's bring that down to just two fish that'll probably be a little bit safer now the reason why i unlocked the smoker is that obviously we can sell smoked meat we can sell smoked fish so let's go ahead and pop together a meat smoker. We're going to need 50 clay for this, 5 ingots. It's a relatively small building which we can comfortably pop over there, I think. Or we could pop it in here somewhere, and that wouldn't be that much of a problem, actually. I want to bring this uh, area up a little bit. I've mentioned that before that we want to make this into more of a little road area here. So, how about we do that right now? Let's uh, just pump that one forward, and then we can cleave off this uh, wall here, and then we can have a three. Uh, tile road moving through there. I think that would be very nice. Let's make sure that that one's done as a bit of a higher priority for us. There we go. Now, the next building that I would like to, to work on here is probably to bring all of this industry inside a building. So, actually have a building down here dedicated towards our mining, simply because we're going to be uh, mining in that room, but also our a, a smithing and, and such. I think that would actually be very, very nice indeed. I can have the bog iron crusher, all of the uh, charcoal and kilns. Can have some nice storage down the back. We'd probably start this area somewhere here. Have a bit of storage and room to get in, and uh, that would also give us plenty of lighting in there. We'll have a look at designing that in a moment, though. Let's have a look over here. How's everything going? The bushes are coming along by the looks of it. Let's have a look. Where are we? Uh, well, I haven't actually started uh, having any of the gather berry stuff at all, but it is growing at 125% over there. Same with these trees as well. Growth rate 125%, which is very, very nice indeed. Uh, it's going to take some time to get all of that laid out, though. These are not going to be far away from... Yeah, they're they're right on top of their first harvest, it looks like. We're going to be a little ways away for, from extracting the oat sheaves from the, from the oats that we've got planted there, though. But we should get quite a few harvests before we have to worry about that, I imagine. We have already had one chick be born. Uh, it was another hen, so uh, that's fantastic. That's bringing this up because I unfortunately had to say goodbye to a couple of the animals as they were seniors, and uh, it is better to uh, to butcher them before uh, just letting them die of old age, really. Uh, there we go. That Hopefully we'll start bringing the fish in shortly. And if we... There we are. Fantastic. Got that all ready as well. Now, do I want to change the building material that we use out here? There is definitely a case for that. Uh, we could go with the stone that we've got down here. What kind of stone is that? Is that uh, regular stone? Uh, stone block walls. I mean, we could. Uh, that requires just a bit of clay and stone blocks. Uh, you know what? Sure. Let's go ahead and start replacing these. That would also open up the opportunity for us to move around some of the, uh, the baths in here. This can definitely remain a bathroom for our workers and just the general folks who, who want to pop in there to get clean. Uh, we can build that up a bit, remove maybe this wall and then just have uh, things pop popped up against the uh, back. Yeah, we can have quite a few baths in there. And that might make a lot of sense considering how many people we have got in the clan right now though it, it does beg the the question on privacy i mean having a uh, bath in the middle of the the room for family is a lot less of an ass than you know to people who might not even be from the same bloody clan much less in the same families so, uh, maybe we'll look to uh, give them some some degree of modesty we'll have we'll have a see of what we can do but this will be the room shape definitely uh, likewise, down here, we're going to want this room shape to uh, continue out in this direction, and then probably up around here. There we go. Wow, we've got still wicker walls. My lord, that's kind of a blast from the past, really, isn't it? 
Okay, well, uh, I'm all for uh, having a bit of an upgrade, though. Hopefully this won't take us over long to do. Uh, let's go ahead and build this out a little bit more as well. Might even want to take it all the way up there if we get the chance. Our kitchen as it is, is... Uh, it's a bit of a mess, realistically. Um, what I would love to do, if we had the opportunity to, is to actually turn this into a kind of a worker barracks. And then have the kitchen up here. Like, all of this turned into a kitchen. And maybe some little odds and sods over on this side might be nice. Yeah, that actually might be a really, really good job to do. Uh, still, we've got quite a lot of uh, work to be done before we get to there. I'm going to let them upgrade these walls for now. And then we will start considering what we're going to do with the, uh, the kind of masonry, ceramics, and smithing area down here. Welcome back. It is around about midday on the seventh day, and I have just expanded out the workers' area one more time. Now, my plan here is to expand out our workers to the point where we've got a full three work, uh, sorry, six workers available in each, uh, sorry, in this bedroom, and I would very much like to move the wardrobe down into here as well. Uh, we're going to have the wardrobe down on that side, I think. We may as well move this just up a little bit. That should be fine. Let's bring the wardrobe down. And then our workers are going to have a quite a nice little spot, I think. Uh, it is possible that we could build a, a little light down here, I think, before it becomes a problem. Yeah, we should be able to build a, a light there as well. Let's uh, see about doing something like that. Let's have a little rush light. So a decoration, a wall table, right about there should be lovely. Let's pop in some other decorations as well. Of course, we want some uh, heather wreaths. Uh, we could have one right about here. And in fact, we could have heather wreaths just along the, the wall back there. We'll take this one away. Let's not have that one there. We've got other decorations that we can put up on the wall, I should imagine, like a wall height. We can have something along those lines. Maybe one here and one there. That should look lovely. There we go. That's actually going to be a really, really nice little room. Right, let's get another window in there as well. And this is unintentionally turned into a bit of a barrack upgrade for the workers. Now, that's been a very long-standing thing that I wanted to work on. So I'm not that unhappy with it. Though uh, I did have other plans, but here we are all the same. Right, let's build out the wall down here. Now, this is going to cause me... Hmm, some degree of complications. I'm afraid I'm going to have to move the kitchen around a little bit. In the short term. Ultimately, this is not going to be a kitchen. This is going to be a small common room. But this is going to be, well, I guess the uh, the uh, restroom and well, water closet and bathroom for the workers. We're going to make a proper little barrack for them. And then this can all be industry and or uh, cooking. I think that's going to be amazing. But we are going to have to turn this around so that they can navigate this side a little bit better. There we go. That should work. Thankfully, it's not hard at all to make changes like this. There we go. We will also want to remove the flooring because then we can get these floors back a little bit, which uh, will save us on some of the materials involved. Let's just make sure the floors down here are all pulled up. Yeah, that's fine. That's going to be marvellous. There we go. Yep, that will work. We are going to want a brick floor right there as well. Now we're going to move this door across. Uh, the vent is going to have to move, but that will have to happen in a moment. Let's get these walls being demolished. I've made so many changes to this room. It is kind of funny. Right, there we go. And the vent can now be moved I guess to here wouldn't be a problem. There we are. All right, let's get in the brick floors. There we are. Wonderful. And then the, finally, the door can move across as well. Oh, well, the door will move across eventually. Let's, uh, can someone move that for me? Nice and fast. Thank you. Where's the wooden door? There's the wooden door. Can I pick you up and put you in? There we go. Marvellous. Baby sheep. Fantastic. Let's have a look at our new baby sheep. Uh, there we go. And where's the other one? Okay, so we've got a male and female. All right, not too bad. Uh, how old are they? Uh, about half adulthood, a little bit more than half. So you can be sold. But we definitely want to build up 
the uh, the population of our sheep. We've now got so much more room for them. But having spare beds is never a bad thing, in my opinion. We have got too many male chicks, though. Far too many male chicks, as it happens. We're going to need to work on that one. Uh, we need some more bowls, though. Let's go over here and make a couple more bowls. Let's go ahead and make five more bowls. That should be more than enough for what we need. There we go. Perfect. Right then. So, my plan. We are going to get rid of this bath here. I'm not sure if we're going to place it elsewhere, so I'm just going to take that one down, and we're also going to take this one down. We're also going to remove this floor hide and remove this floor hide. We can place them down in a little bit. Uh, this table probably also want to be moved. I know this is quite a drastic uh, shake-up of everything, but we will get to why in just a moment. Having this like just off the beaten path, I actually kind of like that. Now, we've got eight idea points that are burning a hole in my pocket that I would very much like to get uh, placed down somewhere. Do we have anything that we need over here? No, we don't. Okay, then we're going to get the fancy tile floor over here. We can pick up the hide scraper as well. I can get the stone window. Hmm. Cobblestone floor, though, is the next one for us. Well, I guess stone window it can be as well. Then we can also get the cobblestone bridge later on. But we've now got stone block, uh, cobblestone floor, sorry, indoors and outdoors of eight. Uh, if we have a look at the other floor types, we've got, where's our gravel path? Or just, uh, stone path for that matter. Uh, where are you? Where do you be? Uh, I actually don't see it there. Dry stone fence, gravel path. Outdoors is not a problem. Uh, it's not uh, got a malice to be outdoors. Uh, stone floor over here, outdoors and indoors, is not too bad. This is the stone floor. So, kind of flagstone floor. I don't know what the, the cobblestone floor is going to look like. But I'm thinking cobblestone through the middle. Let's have a think. Let's have a, have a demonstration of what this might look like. Let's do a, a smaller demonstration, though. What I want is uh, a couple of different components to this. We'd have something like that. And then this would go along in that direction, that direction. And then we perhaps have just regular stone floor. Just flagstone floor following the sides. Let's see which one looks better. I mean, ultimately... Efficiency-wise, it would make sense to make it all out of cobblestone, but I don't think that's going to be as as uh, nice to look at, in my opinion. So I'm going to try and have uh, a border and then a central kind of uh, component to it. That's why I've been making all of the paths where I can three wide, it's, uh, just in anticipation of this part of the build. Uh, how are we doing for Pete? We're actually doing quite well, but uh, I could always do better, I suppose. Let's have a look. Are we actually up to the point where I've got uh, more or less, I would say? We've got enough? Yeah, I'm not too worried about that. We we don't need to do any more uh, peat harvesting for now. How are we doing for replanting the oats? Okay, could be better. Will hopefully be better before the end of the season. We'll see. Right, as you can see, I have made two small... Uh, uh, rooms over here. We are of course going to be putting in the lavatories there So let's get the toilet built in against these walls We are also going to be having some decoration as well in the shape of a corner table Which will allow for a rush light kit. So this will be a lit room. We'll have a little vent there and a little vent here to allow uh, um, Air to travel through because honestly these doors are so uh, good for the environment that I really, really do want them in there just to lift up the uh, the prestige of the rooms. We'll have a little bit of heather on the walls there as well. Uh, we could have a wall hide uh, in this room, I suppose, or we could just have some heather. And I think maybe some heather would be nice in the bathroom. Now, ultimately, my idea would be to have a door over here and then probably have a vent bringing in the uh, warm air going that way instead or, or, or something along those lines and having another bath 
Uh, we could do without that one, though. Especially because currently this room is getting all of its heat from this, and having the, the heat have to travel through so many rooms does kind of degrade how much heat is going to end up over here. But for now, this should do quite nicely. There we go. We've got that one all set up. We've got a little uh, clothing basket, which no longer really serves a purpose in this room, so we're going to get rid of it. Uh, we'll also get another little uh, table in here. It could be a corner table. Sure, we can make it a corner table as well. Actually, we can have the, the little tile corner table instead. I think that'll look quite nice in there. Now, we also want a, uh, a gong place down here as well. So let's make that happen. Uh, we want storage, gong place. This will, of course, be for the, uh, the, empty, um, the empty chamber pots. And that should make for a very, very nice little area for us. I think this is going to be fantastic. Okay, look at those cobblestone, uh, cobblestone walkways. I quite like that. Now, we could have gravel out here as well, because that's largely just a byproduct. It wouldn't be as pretty, though, uh, in terms of the as far as the, the uh, clan are con going to consider it. But I think it will actually look quite nice. As far as I consider it. So let's have a look at how this would uh, line up for us. We'd of course have a cobblestone floor leading down here. Right up to the gate. And then it'll become a uh, mulch path from that point. Or maybe I could even have a mulch path down here frankly. But we'll, we'll see. But that actually looks really nice. I am I'm a big fan. Yeah, definitely. I, I think that looks wonderful. Right, the only thing I want in here is of course empty chamber pot. And on that note, we need some more... I'm going to say, make me three there, and make me three here. There we go. And this is all coming together very, very nicely. Look at that. Rushlight kits straight up and in use. I am actually genuinely, genuinely happy with this. This has turned out like a, a really, really well. Turned out brilliantly compared to what I was expecting. I didn't... I, I mean, I, I liked the idea of it, but this is much better than I, uh, than I uh, did hope. Now... With that, let's update the zones. Ooh. These don't blend in too well, do they? Hmm. Not as sold on that. Not as sold. Is there a better co combination? Would flagstone floors work better for us? Like stone floors? Let's have a look. Would that line up a bit better? Let's just do something like that. Now, they're going to take big stones, so it's going to be a bit of a problem for us, but uh, we'll see. Uh, as for this, though, let's go back to the zones. We want the workers' hearth. That should no longer be out here, so let's remove tiles from there. But this is starting to look very, very nice indeed. You know what? We'll bring it out to include the walls. Sure, why not? Yeah. No, I very, very much like that. That's wonderful. This is going to be perfect for them. Uh, hopefully. <laughs> I mean, I'm speaking on their behalf there, but... Uh, oh, yes, that looks much nicer. That has a much nicer border effect. Yeah, I think that's the one that we're going to go for, then. We will have cobble in the middle, and then flagstone down the side. That being said, how about we just for science this? It would it, be remiss of me not to. Let's do a little bit of for sciencing with the cobble on either side. Now, technically, that will actually even be better for the for the look of it as far as the clan are considered, because there'll be much more cobble floor here if I'm using it as the border. There'll be twice as much, in fact, um, versus having the flagstone in the middle. And we'll see how it goes. Uh, the, the, I don't think there's really any kind of significant speed difference. So, uh, uh, yeah, there is, actually. So... Uh, Function might dictate that we want the cobble on the side there, uh, in the middle there, but let's at least see what it's going to look like with flagstone moving down the middle. Uh, nevertheless, this is definitely starting to look a little bit more industrial down here now, isn't it? Uh, I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure I like the, all of the, the, the stone brick buildings. I might prefer more of a, uh, more of a uh, dry stone rather than stone brick. We'll have to have a look, though. It looks like we've managed to get a lot more of the grain planted. That is fantastic. I'm super happy about that. That's looking much, much nicer. All right, well, I'm going to allow them to finish off this work over here. And whilst that's happening, I'll see if I can finagle 
getting my uh, kitchen work uh, workbenches up in here in some way and moving some other things out. We'll see how that goes. Bring you back soon. Okay, as you can see, I have been rather hard at work and I'm fairly happy with the results of my work. Though, of course, we need to do a little bit more clean up here and there. But by and large, we have now got a kitchen. We have done more things in the this episode than I remotely expected to get done. I am actually really, really pleased with this. Shockingly pleased, in fact. Uh, right, let's get that sorted out, and then we're going to move one or two of these across. I would like another uh, rat trap just down there, if I can get uh, we're going to say goodbye to this one. This is not going to... This is going to have exactly the same setup as over here. So, meat items only, please. And th oh, actually, raw um, meat items specifically. So, that shouldn't be there either. Nor should haggis neeps. Uh, yeah, we just want egg, raw eels, raw fish, raw meat. So... That's going to be a relatively easy one for me to set up because we want the, all of the cooked food to be somewhere else. Uh, that allows me to very easily just look at the shelves and see which ones have anything on them and, and vaguely know what that means for our overall food situation. Uh, for example, over here we only want cooked meals for, uh, to be uh, present, but not dried mushrooms. Dried mushrooms are on that side. Raw mushrooms, because when we collect raw mushrooms, we collect a lot of raw mushrooms. Uh, they should go down there. These dried mushrooms, I mean, I guess I could always have dried mushrooms on this side as well. We just have raw mushrooms down there, I suppose. Uh, that wouldn't hurt, I guess. Sure, we'll do that. There we go. And then this one can just loose all of its items. There we are. Marvellous. This one's a four. This one should also be a four, so we shouldn't really have just shoved everything across there. Uh, this should be a three, ideally. And uh, again, yeah, that's only going to have meat items on it, so we should be good with that. Uh, let's go ahead, though, and pop down another pantry storage. And little by little, we're actually getting all of this put together the way I want it to be put together. Oh, really? Have we got uh, more coming in? These should be on threes. Yeah, they are. Right, let's get rid of these. And we are finally going to have a very, very well-stocked pantry. I say finally. We've actually been doing really well for food, honestly, throughout the game. Right, there we go. And we'll pop down the other storage item. I honestly started this episode thinking, right, we're going to get these buildings built down here and possibly start on the farm workshop. And we've done something completely different. But we have done such a good job of it, in my opinion. Uh, right, I want very similar to what we've got up here, and that is only full meals. If we don't have full meals available, then they are welcome to go and get stuff from the pantry, which is not very far away. But generally speaking, I really want them to get through the, the meals that are going to give them big bonuses to various work, really. Uh, okay, that, that wood wall looks very different, doesn't it? Yes, yes it does. Uh, is this on auto build? Yes, yeah, so this one shouldn't be. We shouldn't be using that for, for bros. This should be purely for heating. Uh, anything else we want stored in here? Uh, nothing's jumping to mind. I think that should be fine. So we're going to go ahead. We're going to pop down a door then. We'll get a, a regular wooden door. And we'll pop in a little vent as well, of course. Uh, there we are. So this room should ideally be kept nice and warm. Now, of course, a lot of things on the floor. And that's because I've been moving things around so much. So I'm going to tell you, hey, clean things up as a priority, please. Uh, let's, let's not uh, be tardy about this, shall we? Uh, further to that, I would also like these walls to be upgraded. Let's get some wooden walls on the inside. In fact... I wasn't really best pleased with the way that these walls look. I'm going to be honest with you. These internal walls being stone blocks, it doesn't feel right. It feels like they should be wood on the inside, the the uh, internals, and then the, the external walls should be stone. That makes sense to me. Having external stone walls seems pretty, uh, pretty sensible on the whole. Uh, we can, I guess, have more branch stockpiles in here, or something along those lines, maybe. Uh, we can also pop in uh, better torches for nighttime work. 
That is another option for us. We've got some dog beds down here. In fact, I'm going to move this one over here instead. Uh, there we go. We'll have this cat bed down there as well. There we are. Now, what I would very much like in here is something we built a long time ago, but then I got rid of. And that is, uh, let's see, it isn't the workbench, it is the learning table, whatever that would be. Where would that be and what would it be under? I would imagine crafting, but perhaps, there we are, Tinker's Bench, yeah. I would like a place for our children to learn things. Multiple generations, all playing the flute together. How fantastic. You can hear the difference in uh, the layers of skill. The older you get, the better you are with the flute. Everyone knows this. It's just, it's just the way the world works. Uh, we, we need to listen to Bentham play. I bet Bentham is amazing at it now. I mean, look at that beard. Of course he's amazing at it. But at this point, we don't actually need this area as part of the workers' hearth anymore. The workers have a fully functioning hearth down here. Uh, Bentham's hearth. Yeah, it's just over there. Yeah, Worker's Hearth is no longer going to include any of this. We no longer need any of that to be a part of the Worker's Hearth. This is the Worker's Hearth in its entirety. And then everyone else can, you know, you just come and go to get food as you need. So this will be purely for the workers from this point onwards. And this is going to be, I guess, for everyone. Um, especially because, uh, of obviously, our kin don't have a specific... Uh, serving table for them. I guess I could make a zone specifically for that if we've really, really found that to be a problem. But the final thing that we can do is we can spend some of these idea points. We have been earning these hand over fist today. Hand over fist. I could go for the cheese press. Do I really want to, though? It would mess up my kitchen. <laughs> uh, I'm going to say probably not. Instead, we're going to get the harp. The, the Welshman in me says the harp is a necessity not a desire we need it and i agree uh okay cobblestone bridge we're not going to be building that anytime soon but i think that's going to be where this episode is going to be wrapping up my lord if you ever wonder how long these uh, episodes take and bear in mind most of the time when uh when i i've uh, i'm working off camera i've got her on times four speed but uh just to let you know this this video has taken me so far three and a half hours to record oh yikes uh right we'll see if i can edit this down into a sensible uh, sensible episode before we upload it though looking at the time i don't have that long to do it if i wanted to go out today which i do but i am so so happy with the progress that we have made we have made it to summer year five first of summer and our Workmen have their own... What, Bentham, where did you sleep last night? Please tell me you didn't sleep down here when you've got the perfectly beautiful bed over here with clan tartan on it as well. You better not have. But uh, I really do hope you have enjoyed this episode and do let me know in the comments which of the two designs for the main kind of roads going through the clan, uh, or rather the clan lands. That is flagstone on the outside and then cobblestone down the middle or cobblestone on the outside and flagstone down the middle the effect will be that our clansfolk will prioritize the faster surface so as long as it's not winter time uh, with option number one they'll walk down the middle of the road and then in summertime they will uh, sorry uh, the option two they will walk down the outside of the road so uh, do let me know but if nothing else rejoice our workers have private bathrooms private toilets this is a great upgrade for them and a nice little place for them to uh, socialize in as well i am really really happy with the progress we've made and i hope you are as well the fields are planted and although we haven't added too much in terms of new buildings we have drastically improved the use of the old ones i think we can all agree but that is going to be it from me so until next time and as always from myself and the whole of clan avac you take care, everyone.